Welcome to That Annuity Show, the podcast that will make you an expert in explaining annuities to your clients. Give us 30 minutes each week and we'll shave hours from your client presentations. Now, here's your host, Paul Tyler. Hi, this is Paul Tyler and welcome to another episode of That Annuity Show. Ramsey, how are you? Fantastic. Great to be here. Good. Mark, uh, we've been doing a lot of work together lately. How are you? We have. It's been uh, been great fun. I'm doing great. Thank you. Yeah, excellent. Uh, Mark, the, the fish you caught uh, on your vacation were phenomenal. I'm still looking at those pictures at fa- on Facebook. Uh, what was that? What, what kind of fish was that you were catching? So it was a king salmon and a brown trout were the two that uh, were in the pictures. And it was, it was amazing. It was upstate New York, uh, Pulaski, New York. And uh, it was during the salmon run. And it was incredible. We've done it the last several years, and it's just great fun. Oh, this is great. You know, I, ignorant me, I, I thought I had to go all the way to, uh, you know, out to the West Coast to catch salmon. Go figure. So that's... Uh, right in your backyard. Right, right there. Well, um, hey, listen, we, we've got a returning guest to our show, and uh, we had such a good time uh, last time, uh, we thought it would, and, and the way the market's moving, we thought it'd be great to have Mr. David Hanslick back with us who is a Vice President of Annuity and Retirement Solutions at CUNY Mutual. David, welcome back. Hey, thanks for having me. Good to see all of you guys again. It's, it's, it's great to see you as well. For, for people who are listening on audio, David, man, you lost a lot of hair between uh, <laughs> this episode and last. What happened? Yeah, I, um, yeah, I got it shaved. Um, we uh, reached a really, you know, incredible milestone we uh, uh, breached the 10 billion assets under management mark uh, for our annuity division here at CUNY Mutual Group and um, myself and our head of sales we had promised that we would shave our heads if or when we reached that mark and we did so that's why I'm looking uh, lean and mean these days how long did you have that bet going on for well it, it, we, we talked about it over four years ago so it's wow. been, you know, four years in the making. And uh, it, I, I can tell you, I was, there's a lot of anxiety and apprehension right before it, it, it happened. And then... Um, <laughs> but yeah, offset, I'm you know, sure, by hitting that milestone. So that's great. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And, uh, and I've gotten a lot of advice on, uh, you know, care for the, the head from uh, a lot of different individuals. So anything <laughs> that anyone on the call wants to add to, you know, that, that'd be great. Yeah, more sunscreen than before. <laughs> I've heard that. I've heard that. Yes, yes, I, I would recommend that as well. So, uh, hey, listen, it, it's, that's terrific. Four-year march, it, it kind of shows it's, you know, especially in this business, it takes a long time to build anything that's that's meaningful, right? It's uh, there. There's no such thing as an overnight success uh, in the insurance industry. Uh, yeah, I, I, I agree, Paul. And, uh, you know, we... You know, we did it, uh, you know, uh, in a fashion that we were really excited about and proud of, you know, and, you know, we, we've we focused on simple to use and understand solutions. Um, but, you know, we've also been part of this uh, growing space, the uh, Redshift Next Linked Annuity space, and that's been a huge part of our growth. And, um, you know, I think it, the, you know, th- those two things together have um, you know, really paid off for us. So why do you think it's taken off so much in recent years? I mean, you know, the concept of a registered index annuity came out probably over 20 years ago. A couple of carriers tried it. It really never took hold in the marketplace. What do you think is the difference today um, in terms of the acceptance of it? Yeah. I mean, I think I think everyone that's listening to this probably knows what these are, but we probably just define them again, right? So registered index linked annuities, you know, they're, uh, they're somewhere between a fixed index annuity and a variable annuity. They're, they're clearly a registered product and they um, do have a potential for loss of, um, of principal. Um, but in exchange for that, uh, the, uh, the client is gonna get um, more upside potential than they would get in a traditional fixed annuity, fixed index annuity, or fixed income alternative. And so, um, I'd say, you know, I've oftentimes described this as a democratization of affluent structured note marketplace. These are not structured notes for sure, but they do bring some of those concepts. And, um, you know, last 10 years or so, this is where we've seen the growth in this space. Um, 
CUNY Mutual Group was the uh, third company in market um, back in 2013. And, um, you know, what we've found is um, growth is, you know, the, the ability to provide downside protection is really important to the people that are using these solutions. But that upside potential has been what's captured, um, you know, everyone's attention. And, you know, you combine that right now with, you know, low interest rate environment, it's really hard to find yield. And, you know, people will really want protection. Risk management is very, very important. We hear about it all the time. And, you know, there's a lot of different uh, innovations around risk management. This is, you know, a, a really, really big one. And um, we, we've seen that all kind of combined together to drive the demand side. Uh, so, you know, uh, we've been really pleased to be part of it. And, um, you know, it, early on, there was only a few uh, companies in this space. Uh, today, there's 11 uh, companies in the registered index linked annuity space, or we call it RILA space. And we're also seeing companies uh, enter the space in, um, uh, in, in, in alternative forms, uh, that not necessarily annuity forms. Um, so uh, it's, uh, it's definitely getting a lot of attention, and we believe it's going to continue to to grow um, uh, for at least uh, the next few years. So I've got, I've got a question. Like, what, is your, what is your view on what, what you think RILAs mean for, for the carriers? So, you know, there's a, there's a, there's essentially a sustainability element of this, right? As the business grows, like the carriers need to be, to be able to carry this risk. You know, how does it, how does it fit into their broader business models? Yeah, I, I think Ramsey, that's the other element of, uh, there's a bit of a demand side, or I'm sorry, supply side as well here. Um, so, you know, until recently, this space was um, all on the retirement accumulation side. So um, we saw a lot of growth in the early 2000s as guaranteed living withdrawal benefits um, were introduced and gained popularity. And that, that, that was a huge part of the growth in the annuity space, uh, especially in the variable annuity space. And um, uh, RILAs, um, they, they, for many companies, they can be seen as a way of diversifying their annuity risk profile um, because they, you know, they, they are accumulation oriented, not income oriented. And um, because of how they're structured, they provide some different offsetting uh, risks to not only income versus accumulation, but um, you know, upside versus downside, different equity um, uh, market cycles, uh, volatility environments, and so that's been, I think, a you know, an important part of why this space has um, garnered attention, and um, companies have been willing to invest in um, you know building up the space and building into innovation. Um, now, it is, the, the space is continuing to change. Um, we, uh, our company, as well as several others, have brought uh, income solutions to the space. And I think that'll be, um, I think that's something that when you think about the future of the space, it's certainly, um, you know, fertile ground, um, but it, you know, there's a couple things there. First, from just, you know, the, the client and advisor side, income is, you know, income is still a huge need out there, right? We still have a lot of people that are entering retirement, a lot of people in retirement and, uh, you know, a need for, you know, guaranteeing more of that income continues to rise. Um, but traditional annuity space, you know, usage of uh, income solutions has uh, dropped significantly. Um, variable annuities, fixed index annuities, usage of guaranteed living withdrawal benefits, all uh, below 50% last in 2020 for new sales. Um, but uh, what we found is that, um, you know, guaranteed living withdrawal benefits with Orila has been, um, you know, very well received by the marketplace. We're up over 250% actually in that category of our sales. Um, but, you know, that there's some dynamics there where companies that are seeing this as a way of continue, you know, addressing a, a need for advisors and their clients, but also diversifying against their their book of 
variable annuity or fixed index annuity guaranteed living withdrawal benefits, are they going to then, you know, you know, get more concentrated if they start to bring that, uh, the guaranteed living withdrawal benefit uh, to, to the space. So that will be an interesting dynamic to, to watch over time. I, I personally think we're just going to see more of it because this is a category that advisors are finding to be very useful to deal with this environment of people wanting protection, yields are so low, this provides upside opportunity. And there's a lot of creativity in terms of just, you know, being able to find ways of structuring the solutions to you know, meet a variety of different uh, uh, needs out there. Yeah, so, so, so you, David, you, if, you I was going to say, if you look at the drop off in terms of election of, of income riders on annuity products, you think that's primarily a byproduct? I mean, because obviously the demographic is still moving in, in into re, through retirement. Do you think that's really a byproduct of the strong equity marketplace we've seen for the last, call it, decade or so? And individuals trying to, I guess, save the expense of adding a rider on, in in in, in anticipation of that market continuing. Yeah, I think you, you're on to a couple things there, Mark. I mean, certainly, I take that that second point for first. You know, more sensitivity to uh, fees, and um, I think there's a little bit of that from, um, you know, regulation. You know, just uh, you know, Department of Labor. Uh, you know, best interest, that sort of thing. But I also just think it's it's the, you know, yield environment. And, you know, just, um, hey, when interest rates are at one, one and a half percent, you know, a one percent fee seems a lot bigger than when they're at two and a half, three percent. Um, but I, we always, we see this a lot in um, a number of different fashions in our own book of business, as well as when we talk with our distribution partners, we talk with competitors that when markets are doing well, and as, as they have been thematically for over a decade, but even in, in short cycles, you know, when, you know, you'll see it within a year, the, you know, if the market drops for, you know, during a month, you know, or a couple of months, you know, we'll see more, we'll, we'll see a, a stronger movement into, um, you know, upside potential solutions when markets are up and you know, a rush out of them when markets are down. And so um, I think there's been, you know, with this the strong equity market, um, less value placed on long-term guarantees. And um, I think there's one third of the thing I'd add to this as well is, um, I think we all have, you know, we all have short and long memories in different places, right? So, I mean, you, we're all on the, we're all the here, you know, financial professionals, and we all have to navigate this, this difficulty of ourselves as well as all the, um, you know, the the customers we're trying to help, of, you know, having trouble thinking about things over, you know, over months, over years, over decades, and um, one of the things that you see here is that I still see that um, advisors are uncomfortable with the level of fees in relation to the guarantees that are provided under, um, you know, withdrawal benefits. Um, you know, I, I talk to advisors quite frequently and so many of them can bring up that, Hey, you know, I, I have these in my book of business, I've got fees at this level with this guarantee level. And today I'm, you, we have this in market. How can, how does this make sense? And obviously, you know, interest rates are a lot lower companies have gotten much better uh, at uh, risk assessment. But I think that piece too of just, uh, you know, trying to understand the, the, um, the value that you're getting for cost is, um, I think is a, is a bit of a headwind and, um, you know, uh, and you bring with that, that you haven't had a sustained market, you know, correction or crash, you know, all those factors all come together to, I think, um, you know, take the take a little bit of the wind out of the sails of uh, you know guarantee living withdrawal benefits, Mark. But we found that, and I think we're going to see this, and this is again why I'm more bullish on the growth in the Rila uh, space for guarantee living withdrawal benefits. Um, the, the 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 structure, the the protections, the upside potential, um, a reasonable level of fees. I think those are all kind of coming together, and you know, I think advisors are finding that there's there's more there. Um, and it's overcoming some of the, these other concerns um, uh, or hesitations to use a guaranteed living withdrawal benefits with uh, VAs and fixed index annuities. 
Yeah, well, as quickly as markets uh, grown, David, over the last uh, four or five years, still feels like we're on the in the early innings. Uh, you know, I think back to fixed index annuities mark way back in you know 2003, 2004. One index, S and P 500, Ramsey. You remember this? Maybe six crediting strategies. Wow, look at it today. <laughs> um, I, 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 David, you kind of have alluded to the structures. You know, some of the guarantees, the fee structures. Where where do you see the innovation taking place on the on the RILA front over the next you know say two or three years? Yeah, Paul, I think you know you're seeing some parallels to that fixed index space, right? Um, you know, let's start with you know the I think of the the RILA space having like three attributes. One is um, term length, you know, so. There's, and that, that hasn't changed a lot, but it's like you could have a one-year term, a three-year or a six-year term, five-year term. So, you know, the term over which the, uh, the, the index and the guarantee, you know, performs and gets locked in, that hasn't changed much. Then, then there's the protection. So the, the first product in market was a, a buffer solution where the first 10, 20, 30% of market loss is absorbed by the company. The client is on the hook for the rest of it. We, we, we brought a floor design. So we've been in the floor market for a long time where we have absolute protection. Um, we go from anywhere from zero to negative 10%. By the way, we've gotten in the buffer space too now. But And then there's then recently you started to see more variations. And this is um, a barrier uh, you know, approach where absorbed by the company to let's say 10% and then if it goes beyond 10% the the client is on the hook for all the downside not just not just everything in excess of 10 um, you have part of part of that that, that protection strategy is um, different ways of potentially locking it in you know so um, you know you can lock in where you are before end of term Maybe at, you know at a market-based value, or maybe you can move it into a, a fixed bucket. And so there, that there's a, there's that innovation is speeding up, and there's some carriers that are choosing to offer a significant number of options in their in their their product instead of uh, when we came to market, we had two options. Uh, and you could mix between a zero and negative ten percent floor, and that was it. It was an S and P five hundred index. We have some, we've seen some competitors that have like 50 plus different types of, um, you know, structures you can uh, uh, engage in. And then, of course, it's the, in, you know, um, the indices and the crediting strategies with those. So S&P 500 continues to be the majority, but we're starting to see, you know, more of the custom indices that you see um, in the fixed index annuity space, which, by the way, I think, I believe it was it was either this year or last year was the first year maybe it was this year the first year that fixed index annuities custom based indices were the majority of indices used, and so we're not there yet in the Riley space but we're seeing more of that we're seeing ESG, um, you know volatility control different sorts of performance we've seen uh, uh, some ETF based in so ETF instead of an index an ETF strategy so we're seeing a lot of that kind of. Uh, speeding up, and then of course is the crediting approaches, kind of like what you saw with fixed index annuities. Not this exactly the same, but you know it started point to point, then it became monthly average and that sort of thing. Different sort of approaches, and I think it's all being driven by, hey, looking for ways of creating risk management and upside potential that can be used in a variety of different fashions for the advisor and client to you know, structure to their unique needs. And so I see that continuing, Paul. Um, and I think that's another key kind of future, um, you know, part of this marketplace is where it's gonna be the balance between all the options, all the innovation complexity versus, you know, one of the things I think this market has done really well was it, it you know its core was some the simple concept of hey you know you take on a little bit more risk from our upside potential and you know and you know so is that where, where's that balance of um, you know is it is it too much too much in a, too much innovation too much complexity versus kind of trying to get after the core uh, need that you know you're trying to address with the client. 
So um, <clears throat> have, have a lot of thoughts there. So, in, you know, in a, in a, as you talk about all those structures, you know, given that this is, you know, when I was an investment banker, this is the area I was in. I just see options. Right. I see exotic cool. options, right? And, um, you know, uh, so there's, there's two things. I'll, first, I'll start with kind of the people, right? So forget the products. Like, I'm just curious, like, when I say people, I mean, like, really, like, advisors. So what is the, you know, what does the advisor look like that you talk to now as you sell Rylas um, versus um, versus before when you were selling, you know, FIAs? And that's, that's a big jump, right? Like you've you're you were selling products before that didn't require being registered, but but now you know anybody that sells Rylas needs to be registered. You know, are are they different advisors? Do they have different personalities? Like, what, tell me about how that how the discussion with advisors is. Has changed as you've as you've you know grown this this new product so substantially. Yeah, and I can speak more to our experience, which you know isn't necessarily going to capture the whole range of the you know the marketplace. But um, I think it depends, Ramsey, on um, the advisor and you know the, the institution that they're associated with. So we've found that more fi- financial institution advisors. Um, uh, again, you know, these, these are only sold through registered advisors, not going through, you know, the, um, you, know, you know, a platform rep. Um, they tend to um, be more on the, um, you know, more closer to the the products, that, like our products that have floors. They, they're, they're, they tend to be closer to fixed annuities, fixed index annuities in terms of what they're they're focusing on. And um, what we've been able to um, work with them on, and I, you know, is that a reflection of them or their their end clients? Right? I mean, their clients tend to be, are, are, are financial institution clients more conservative. Is that so? But then, as we go to more, uh, you know, advisors that are working in the independent broker dealer space, you know, they're um, they tend to you know look for. Um, more upside potential. And, you know, I, in general though, Ramsey, the, I think these advisors are advisors that are comfortable with registered products or with variable annuities. And um, they've, been, um, they've been comfortable taking these solutions on. Um, what we found though is it was very, it was, it was much easier for us with our really simple solutions. It, it, that made it, it was easier for us to gain traction. Um, it took it took me um, it was well yeah it took me ten years to get comfortable offering a buffer in our in our product set <laughs> but um, I, I felt that I, over time I found that the advisor became more familiar with the solutions and what I didn't think was simple to use and understand ten years ago you know you got to you got to meet you got to meet the marketplace where it's at and the marketplace has evolved and I think the advisors understanding these solutions their comfort with them. Um, has evolved and so they, they are becoming more um, comfortable with them um, and yeah I, I agree Ramsey that there's uh, I mean you know what what it takes to con- create these sort of solutions um, and uh, you know it's you know we're we're trying to take take that as the in, we're, we're, we're institutional um, uh, financial institutions that can you know behind the scenes manage that and then Package it in such a fashion that provides something that's useful for an advisor and a client to work together to um, address their their end needs. Sure. Well, I mean, I think there's right. There's just, there's a lot of different layers here. So so one layer is that that decision that a you know a consumer or their advisor is, that says you know you you need more yield. You just do right. Like we all have expenses, so you're gonna have to take a little bit more risk. And so moving to a place where there's some principle at risk, I think is. Um, I mean, I think that's actually quite a healthy discussion to, a very healthy discussion to have. Um, you know, it'll just be interesting to see, you know, to your point, like you know, how much of the, you know, the, the complexity, the complexity that we saw in some of the other markets, um, you know, some of which is, you know, is about differentiation and marketing, how much of that will kind of come into the, uh, come into the Rylist space. So again, for, for me, the big innovation is taking a little bit of downside risk I think that is. I think that's a very valuable innovation. I think the the rest of it, you know, can be valuable, but I, uh, I think it starts with that first simple thing. And it sounds like you, you know, you've primarily focused on the simpler solution. So I, I applaud you for that. 
Yeah, and I, I we still always I, I describe it, and you know our how we approach the land space is it. People are looking to first of all, like how, they want that the downside protection they want, the upside potential they need. This enables the upside potential they need, rather than this is a way for them to you know run after upside potential and give them some. No, you know this is these are still built around protection and. Um, but yeah, it, it's it, I, like I said, it's a, it's an interesting. Um, it'll be interesting to see how the market continues to evolve, because you know, looking, companies looking to differentiate uh, as well as looking to find um, advisors and clients that are looking for something that um, you know, that's it, more a niche that they're 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 trying to um, address in, in in their portfolio. And um, but yeah, we're we're sticking to the kind of. We're, we we continue to stick to that simplicity because that that fits more for what we're we're comfortable with and we think is our strengths as a company. So I guess where are you seeing more of the shift from an advisor perspective? Are you seeing more of a shift of the the, the advisor that would traditionally do a VA um, go into the Ryler, or more of the traditional fixed or FIA producers saying, "Hey, let's let's take a little bit more risk exposure and try to get a little bit higher yield." Like, is there is there a, is there a trend yet on that? Yeah, I, I don't think there's a uh, mark. I wouldn't say that there's a uh, like a, a trend. Like it's it's all this, it's all that. Um, I think it's it's more that you're you're seeing the floor designs bring more of the traditional fixed fixed index annuity um, uh, advisors and their clients over, and you know more the buffer designs, uh, you know, are, are making more inroads with the variable uh, annuity. Um, uh, ad, ad advisors, would, uh, and so that's what we've seen. But we're, we're seeing crossover for sure. But it's not a, um, it's not just it's not just one group that you know, you're seeing all that growth. I mean, the financial institution space is growing really, uh, really well. So is so is the independent broker dealer space. Clearly, the independent agent space is is not growing as much because uh, not everyone there is registered, right? So that, you know, it's just not, a, it's not a fit for, um, the major, you know, um, where that space has been, although that space is continuing to evolve. And your, uh, we, we actually didn't talk a lot about CUNA this time. We did last time, but for those who didn't, uh, who weren't able to, to, uh, to who weren't on the last one, tell us a little bit about, a little bit about CUNA and in particular, you know, where you, you know, where you really have, you know, dominant market share. It's with, Credit unions predominantly, right? Right. So we've been in uh, the market over eighty-five years. We were started by credit unions, and so that's a that's a space that we know really well. And um, you know, we are uh, you know really a you know a dominant player there across a number of different financial service uh, services. Um, you know, life insurance, credit insurance. Um, you know. Re- retirement plans, as well as, um, in the annuity space. And, um, you know, we've, we, we, um, we enjoy a lot of growth there and, um, but we also have been moving off in, in the last few years and to the, you know, how did we get to 10 billion of assets under management? You know, we, we've been moving into other financial institutions, um, independent broker dealer space and, um, you know, having, Great growth, uh, you know. We're up fifty percent year over year in terms of annuity sales, and um, you know, and, and the the whole company. Credit unions are our primary distribution channel, but we've been moving um, outside of credit unions as we've been looking to try to reach more consumers where they're um, where they're willing to be met. So, um, annuities is part of that. Um, retirement plans are part of that. We're doing that on the life insurance side as well, and um, so. You know, the, the company is very focused on, you know, the core mission of um, helping people access, you know, and, um, you know, guarantee a brighter financial future. And um, obviously, you know, annuities are a key part of that. Um, and, uh, you know, right now, um, having great success this year, it's, uh, and, you know, we're going to continue to, you know, you know, you know drive in the credit union space, but also, um, you know, other financial institutions, independent broker dealers, because we feel like, you know, those advisors are doing a great thing, reaching a lot of different clients. And we believe our solutions can be very impactful there as well. Yeah. Well, just a continued discussion we had uh, last time, 
I, t- I tell you, the, the whole environment, you know, with coronavirus, this pandemic, I, it changes like every 15 days. Now, start to see the numbers finally coming back down. Um, what, what, what are your predictions for the industry sales um, over the next, you know, three months? Are we going to have a strong finish, you know, in the annuity space? Or is it, you know, do you think we'll see interruptions again uh, in the last couple of months? Yeah, I think um, we're going to, uh, I think it's going to remain very strong. Um, I know that, uh, you know, it's too early to see third quarter results, but I, I, you know, what I saw through the second quarter for the industry was really, really, um, really good, um, strong growth. And I, I see that can, our experience has been similar in the third quarter. We did expect that to be similar for the industry and we see it for the, through the end of the year. I think, um, you know, advisors and, um, the institutions that are part of have found ways to evolve um, in, in this space, you know, embracing, you know, more virtual, um, you know, you know, um, you know, business practices. And then the, cust- the customer base has just gotten more comfortable being able to navigate that, right? Uh, and um, so we, we think even, even if, you know, even though it does look like the, you know, the Delta variant surge is, is starting to ease off, if it came back, we think that, um, you know, business practices are going to be resilient enough to um, navigate through this. And, and on top of it, it's just the the factors that are driving the demand, you know, low interest rates, a need for upside, um, need for protection. Those are, those are all are going to remain. And, um, um, you know, on top of that, there's a number of things happening. You know, we're, you know, what are going to be some of the changes as it relates to tax code? And, um, you know, there's a lot of uncertainties that are, uh, I think, you know, highlighting for advisors and their clients, um, you know, the place for annuities in their portfolios. David, how about in terms of the the products themselves? Obviously, we've seen an evolution in the products, bringing bringing more like broad platforms of indices into them. Um, You mentioned earlier, bringing in uh, guaranteed income riders. You see any other changes taking place going forward in the near future? Yeah, you know, just adjacent to the, the RILA space, I mean, and this is kind of part of how you know, to me, it's part of the evidence of, uh, you know, a demand for risk management. I mean, you are seeing, um, you're seeing, you know, some people call them phylas, which are fixed index linked annuity, which are, they're, they're registered index annuity. Well, they have the concepts of registered index annuities, but they're in a, a fixed annuity chassis. So they have um, the underlying principal guarantees. They have the crediting strategies that are similar to registered index linked annuities. But there isn't that potential loss of principle. It's just more capturing that upside. And it's for those that, you know, it's for non-registered agents as well as those that just don't want to have any downside, you know, potential. And um, another another place that I've seen some, we're seeing a lot of interest is, uh, you know, I guess they're called buffer funds or defined, um, defined outcome funds where, you know, the, these are primarily in, in the annuity space as funds within variable annuities, which try to replicate um, what a registered index linked annuity does. A little more complexity here because they don't have the actual underlying gear, insurance company guarantee. They're more like an ETF where they're, they're trying to approximate, you know, a floor or buffer protection. Um, but, uh, you know, we've seen some actual true ETF outside of a, a annuity chassis um, offerings here. So I, I think the, you know, Mark, the, the, the protection um, innovation is something that's going to continue to be focused on. And, you know, it's like there's a continued, you know, reaction around this low interest rate environment. How do you provide protection, but also get that upside potential? And I, I, I've said it a couple of times now, I'm really bullish long term on uh, income just because I just, you know, I mean, I'm think I, I think I'm thinking in terms of decades, and I'm just saying that people need income help, right? And um, right. you know, it'd be, how how great would it be if we could have Goldilocks scenario of markets up five to ten percent per year till I die? But you know, that's not going to happen, right? So I, you know, uh, and um, we're going to continue to have more and more people that don't have um, you know traditional defined benefits sort of backstops, and so I think that you know. There'll be a need for our, our industry to continue to find uh, income solutions that'll, that'll push more on manufacturing organizations like myself to you know bring innovations like a Ryla 
with a guaranteed living withdrawal benefit. And I think we'll just continue to see um, that, um, uh, you know, in market and, you know, more attention to it. You're on mute, Paul. I, 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 that was not famous mute, words, just famous, <laughs> fa famous lines of 2020 and 21. <laughs> yeah. Hey. So. So, David. Yeah. Thanks so much. I think uh, this. This was. Uh, you. You really covered the waterfront. I think. Um, uh, congratulations on your recent sales. Um, Mark. Any last questions or, or comments for for David? No. Just David. Thank you very much. I mean, I appreciate your insight. I think. Uh, you know. I, I agree with your outlook in terms of where the market will end this year, and um, you know, we we'll appreciate you coming back on again. Thank you. Yeah. Ramsey. Uh, same. Just want to say congratulations on your uh, congratulations on your success. Your hair will grow back. <laughs> <That's hope so. laughs> if only we could say the same. Yeah. And uh, yeah. Good. Good luck going forward. And you know, I'll be I'll be watching with with great interest how the how the ride of the market continues to evolve. Yeah. Hey. Listen. Th thanks so much for coming. And uh, yeah, we'll, we'll definitely have you back uh, the next few months. And uh, you know, catch up. I'm, I'm sure the way this market is running, David, uh, you'll have some. Uh, you're, you're, you're not going to be short on on topics of, of interest for people here uh, as we we head into 2022. So thanks so much, um, David. Thank you. Thank you. Pleasure but, as always to spend time with you guys. Excellent. Thanks. Okay, Mark Ramsey. Great as usual to spend some time. And uh, for our listeners, uh, thanks for listening. And uh, you can be sure to give us feedback. Uh, like us, uh, uh, share the podcast with your friends, and uh, you know, send, send us ideas for guests and uh, questions we, we should ask. Um, so thanks. Thanks again. And join us again next week for another episode of That Annuity Show. Thanks for listening. If you've enjoyed the show, please rate and recommend us on iTunes, Stitcher, Overcast, or wherever you get your podcasts. You can also get more information at thatannuityshow.com.